welcome to CIO News. I am Kush Bisoni, your host for the broadcast and chief editor at CIO News. This is our exclusive interview series on the topic of voice of CISO. And for our today's discussion and episode, I have uh, Mr. Utka Srivastava, the Vice President Information Security. Um, Utkarsh has 20 plus years of experience in the information security and governance risk and compliance domain. He has successfully handled uh, technical risk assessments on various infrastructure and applications for the BFSI organizations in the past. Um, he successfully designed and handled vendor OGC, um, readiness of security audits and handled external third party security audits as well. Um, Utkarsh, it is an absolute pleasure to have you today. Um, thank you so much for joining us on this series. And I'm really looking forward uh, to talk to you today on some of the information security trends in the IT industry. It's a great pleasure and a good platform to share our ideas with each other. So it's it's a great initiative. Thank you so much, Utkarsh. Mm. Utkarsh, so I would like to begin with putting across my first question. Uh, what are the latest trend of information security in the in the industry that you see today? Well, there have been many buzzwords around. There have been many new terms we have been hearing, but you know they are circling around the same concepts, yeah. like you know reduction of privilege. That is, you know, use of least privilege, attempts towards, uh, you know, avoiding conflict of interest. Mm. So considering all these concepts, the first thing that comes to my mind is zero trust because it sums up everything, you know, all the security technologies that we individually uh, think about. Yeah. So it's like a combination of most of those security controls that, you know, we apply in our organization. Secondly, AI and machine learning is something that, you know, has become unavoidable because uh, merely because of the vast amount of uh, data which has to be assessed and decisions have to be taken in real time. So AI and ML is being used by the threat actors as well. So, you know, to be ahead of the race, uh, we'll have to also use the same. So I've been seeing many offerings from many security product vendors, uh, which, uh, you know, I've added in. AI and ML, though it's in nascent stage. Right. Now, the third trend that I feel is uh, important to mention is data privacy and compliance. As we yeah. know, India also now has, uh, I, I must say, Bharat or India also now has uh, introduced this new act. It has to uh, be applied properly. It has to mature. But yes, it's uh, it's now present. And uh, also we have GDPR in the other nations, actually applicable already since last uh, about a decade. Mm -hmm. So we have to mature in this area and we have to understand about privacy better and you know that it's a right. And uh, if we have to change our way of working within our organizations also now. So these are the three areas, though there are more, but I would focus on these. Got it. And uh, Utkash, uh, how can IoT device facilitate the complex business processes and improve the connectivity across the globe. Some thoughts around that. Well, IoT devices, Internet uh, of Things, right? Well, IoT is everywhere now. Uh, if we talk about the transportation, if we talk about agriculture, it's, it's, you know, in places we don't even know. And it's being implemented in places that we might not even like. So that's a different matter. However, my intention is to explain that, you know, how widespread it is now and why it's being used, because it does enable complex business processes in the way of, you know, providing uh, complex data in real time. And that data can be used for taking real time decisions as well. So as I said, agriculture is one of the best example where, you know, uh, the crops uh, have to remain within the acceptable range so that, you know, they give their best uh, output and also thrive. Secondly, for enhanced uh, security and uh, protection of, uh, you know, life, maybe, you know, in, there are so many sensors in cars nowadays, uh, more probably more than a small uh, aeroplane. So they, these are also connected nowadays. Uh, to a large extent to uh, base uh, base towers and all that. And then there are many more systems which require safety, like, you know, dams and all that. Final uh, important aspect about uh, IoT is a remote monitoring and control. So remote monitoring also, it helps in doing like, you know, uh, 
the best example is in healthcare industry where in, you know people are connected via you know machines connected to their uh, body somewhere or the other to sense uh, you know their blood chemistry or anything like that and to keep real time tab and you know uh, to uh, to avoid emergencies so yes iot devices do facilitate complex business uh, processes however they come in with their own risks absolutely i think very mm -hmm. rightly said um, today i think uh, a lot of manufacturers mm -hmm. in fact have deployed iot and they face uh, of course security threats because of these iot mm -hmm. devices um, and there are um, you know cyber security solutions like ot available as well right so this is great uh, we also uh, talk a lot about uh, you know there, there's a sentence where that we say that trust but verify but in this field mm -hmm. you know zero trust is is something that we believe in, right? So I wanted to understand how can zero trust cybersecurity increase the presence of corporate assets outside the traditional, um, you know, security perimeter? Well, we must say it's already happening. That is why zero trust is more relevant. It's the way you want to look at it. Uh, so yes, I mean, both are related that people remotely working or working from anywhere as compared to you know a company focusing on most of their employees working for from a particular place which is in, right. within their control so putting it in a simple way um, we are losing the uh, network parameter when we are not uh, you know operating from inside the company's uh, network so uh, there should be something to compensate for that so here in uh, we are talking about zero trust uh, the idea of zero trust uh, which simply means that you know uh, don't trust an individual or a system or um, you know any underlying processing just because it gives you business value or you know increases your business so you should um, you know again it's least privilege concept and it comes to asset identification and uh, categorization the access policies the network segmentation and you know even micro segmentation whole disk encryption encryption you know at every stage including yeah. when it's uh, the data is being transported like you know the the zoom call we are having uh, that is also encrypted uh, hopefully endpoint security uh, you know the machines we are using right now uh, you know they they have to be uh, protected yeah. at all times and equally important you know all these taken together uh, and this one taken uh, as a single thing is uh, security awareness a continuous yeah. education and awareness uh, because you know a uh, human is the weakest link uh, you know it's a, it's the most common phrase that we security people use but we you know we forget it most of the times so that's the, the the main thing so when all these things are combined then uh, you know it helps us to uh, achieve the zero trust uh, cyber security uh, concept and uh, various products who, whoever are you know attempting to do this either are combining various other products and you know acting as an or orchestrator in between or they are uh, you know they are acquiring other organizations and you know uh, adding all those services what i just mentioned yeah. in one product so more mm -hmm. all you know see it as i said it's about perspective uh, yeah. zero trust is already there because we are already uh, working from home uh, many Correct. of us Correct. Or or maybe sixty percent we are working from home, or some of us are still working hundred hundred percent. So yeah. so it's already there. The only thing is how strongly we are uh, applying these controls. Correct. Correct. Um, your thoughts around multi-factor authentication systems. I mean, every SaaS applications today that we use have multi-factor authentication and every application for that matter, right? So how can multi-factor authentication systems identify users to prevent security breaches? Well, multi-factor has been there for some time already. Yeah. Uh, we have been using banking apps. We know that. So it's very simple. MFA simply means that don't use only one factor of authentication as much as possible. Use more than one. Right. And what are those? What you know, that is, it may be a password and your username or whatever. And what you are, that is your biometrics and right. what you have. What you have, you have some, you know, uh, smart card or key, uh, which you can insert or a physical key or whatever. So when we combine these factors if possible all three of them 
then we are if we can have the sense of being more secure or in other words making it more difficult to circumvent the controls and the containers that have been built around the data or the systems which have to be protected yeah. so that's about multi factor i actually it's pretty straightforward yeah yeah so i think good uh, conversation kash if you can probably mm-hmm. highlight some of the top 3 best practices that you would want to recommend um, you know cso's or upcoming cso's would be watching our interview today firstly i would recommend uh, having mfa everything you do like it should be a day to day thing like like we eat food yeah in your personal uh, transactions as well as as much as possible within the organization so i i know 3f a people won't consider in most cases but if possible you should do that as well mm-hmm. uh, 2fa has become more or less common but we should um, at least try to make 2fa as a standard like you know there's no one fa right so straight and simple it should be like that so that is the first recommendation i would have and zero trust definitely i mean look when i did uh, cissp long time back the main concepts were the same least privilege and uh, you know conflict of interest avoidance of conflict of interest so just we have to keep these basic concepts in mind and uh, design all the processes as well as the technologies to be implemented even taking decisions on the technologies to be implemented should be based on these two ideas right so then uh, there is less chance we'll go wrong fantastic i think great conversation with you utkash um thank you so much for taking out time and joining us on the cio news platform sharing your valuable insights for our viewers um i'm sure there are a lot of key takeaways so thank you so much and i look forward to having many more conversations like these on various topics in the future well it's my pleasure uh, thank you khushboo thank you so much utkash